today i'm saying that today i'm saying that what single copy of your dll is stored at gsc that's called gac global assembly catch so now we need to see how that public assembly is created for your okay now coming to this public assembly um, how you create it uh, already existing application only i'll convert existing existing application i'll convert hmm. how do you convert what is the process we have so first for shared assembly or public assembly it is compulsory to create strong name you have to create what strong name okay and how do you create strong name and what is strong name we'll discuss it. strong name always will have assembly name version uh, public or private key plus something called culture four things you'll have assembly name version key culture so let's see what it means do we have all those all those things available for your creation of strong name or not how to create go to solution explorer right click on class library one project then you go to properties after going to properties here you have here signing what's the option you have signing signing okay signing and the moment you click on signing here you find one checkbox sign the assembly and here you have choose a strong name key file check this box here drop down list click on new yes what is it asking now what is it asking what it needs now so it is confirming for key file name so any name is fine i'll call this as test dot s n k strong name key strong name key okay password and all i don't want here key if it is asking even on i don't need it's not real time project and all it's normal for demonstration so definitely i don't want those things available now i'm not looking for that okay what else what else you need just click on okay we have created strong name and remember the name what i gave is what i gave is test.snk okay and now what to do is 
close this one. Yes, strong name is created. Now you have to link this strong name to link this strong name to your file. You have to check this. What you have to check? See here. Go to Solution Explorer. Ah, first, go to Class File, that assembly, save, and even build this project. Otherwise, it will not be associated. Build Class Library 1. Okay. After this, what to do? Once compilation is done, we'll see. Yeah, successfully compiled. Now you want to see whether it is associated or not. Go to Solution Explorer. Okay. Where do you check? Where do you check now? Here. Expand References. Class Library 1. Right click. Properties. Here you can find strong name. True. If I would not have compiled this class library, it would not have it would not have shown us as true here. It would have been provided strong name as false. Strong name as a false. Right now, what to do? Make this local. I don't want local copy. Make it false. Two things you notice here. We made copy local as false, and we made uh, strong name as true. Okay, strong name as true. Now done. We are done with all the specification. What else you need now? Now you have to deploy this assembly into GAT. Deploy this assembly into what? GAC. Now, now how to deploy this assembly into GAC? So, Close this application. Not needed. I don't know. We require to run again. Huh? So we don't close that. Hmm. Minimize this. Now open developer command prompt. Start. Developer. Command prompt. For VS 2017, run as administrator. <clears throat> Click on yes.
yeah now we got this prompt you have to go to that location where that dll is available cd cs batch 6 pm cd demo on assembly slash class library one slash bin slash debug yes you have your dll here class library one dot dll right so you have your dll file and what you have to do you have to execute this one so in order to sh make this assembly move to gac global assembly catch you call gac for that i should write gac util gac util hyphen i gac util is application it's exe file it's an API, GAC util, then hyphen I, hyphen I means install, hyphen I is install, install, and then file name, what is that file name, class library one dot dll, if everything is successful, then you find a message that so and so, So and so application is added to GAC. Enter. Assembly successfully added to catch. Where do you check this? Okay. Check now. Go to my computer. This PC. Then C drive. Then uh, windows microsoft.net open this folder in that assembly gac msis class library one so okay some other batches uh, things are also available in it uh, we'll focus off our uh, i mean date and time this is today's date and time these are of other batches just double click on it class library one dot dll so where is this dll now it is in catch global assembly catch gac you call gac now we run my program already i made available go for it execute the code now, local copy will not be available. Local copy will not be available. Same output will come. Same output. But how to justify that there is no this one in the local copy C drive? Uh, CS batch stick PM. In that demo on assembly. In that class uh, sorry console application one bin debug no dll yesterday there was a dll today we don't find that's it <coughs> you want to remove also you want to remove also yes to remove i should say i should say gag util hyphen u uh, i don't feel that you should give any extension okay we'll try one gag util gag util hyphen u uninstall and then i should say class library
Yes. Okay. Now we will see whether it is uninstalled or not. Go to drive Windows Microsoft.net Assembly GAC MSIL. You don't find that folder called what class library earlier it was there here and that two class library was available for four times in my folder four times i just said that based on date and time will identify because they are of, they are created of different different batches of dotnet of my session so i just simply remove how do you uninstall just simply you should say gack util hyphen i and what what only class library name you should not give dot dll just name is enough and go there you don't have rather it has removed all all uh, class library all class library uh, dlls whichever have been made available in that folder all have been uninstalled <clears throat> that is the way how you going to uninstall from gag Okay, now whatever we have discussed till now, we'll try to come up with those things through one picture as we have come up yesterday with private assembly. Same thing I copy. File new. Paste here. And we'll make updations in this picture. Now we are not talking about oh. Now we are not talking about private. We are talking about public assembly. Question is what is public assembly right what is public assembly you said what is the definition i said an assembly whose single copy is deployed in global assembly catch GSE and it is shared by many applications by many applications <clears throat> running on that machine running on that machine that's an answer now interesting part of this total concept is two things two things two things what are they? fine one is this word is very much important single copy and it is deployed in GAC that is another interesting thing and then that application will be shared another important thing all important points in that we covered shared assembly hmm. now first this part i have to remove this is not private now remove this remove this remove this dl remove this dl okay. now we have 
now we have a special location now let me put that location that location is somewhere here we have a special location <clears throat> and this location is gac this location is gac global assembly catch global assembly catch okay so we'll put this gag here somewhere here else yes gag and what will happen in this gag what happened in this gag now what is the story happened now what is that you're looking for in this gap now simple conclusion of this gag is we deployed this uh, uh, what do you call dll we deployed this what dll okay into where gag so here finally you can say here class library 1.dll Yes, we deployed it. Class library one dot DL. Okay, we deployed it. From where did you deploy? Obviously, from the original location. From here. What did you do for this? We used gacutil.exe. Gacutil.exe. That is our API we have used. API. This API we have used and we have installed this DLL into GAC. Now what do we you do is this class library one dot will be used in this application in this application and uh, even that same DLL will be available even for the second application also. So the same DLL is now available even here also. Console app two dot exe. Yes. What did you do? We have used now DLL. So now simple conclusion no local copy rather we have used now no local copy but what did you use we have used the dll in all your applications we have used in this application we have used even in this application that's it that is what we have done by using the concept of what public assembly whatever we demonstrated now the same thing i have mentioned it through architecture right okay second thing now there is something called satellite assembly we have satellite assembly what do we do in satellite assembly is here you can say satellite assembly means a resource only assembly it means a DLL will contain only resource file. A DLL will contain only what? Resource, resource file. Dot RESX file. And it doesn't have any code. It doesn't have any uh, sort of logic. 
nothing you have in it only resource file you have so a file that is containing a resource file an assembly containing a resource file okay so it is called what satellite assembly simple you have to create one class library in that you have to create a resource file and in that resource file whenever it is containing it is called satellite assembly that's it that's it oh now we will go a little further and we'll understand next part of open new project again now we are going to talk on namespaces what are called namespaces class library change the location to our folder cs bash C drive yes. select folder. I'll change this demo on name spaces NSPS and class library one. Click on OK. right now remove all this so now in this example we'll focus on we'll focus on what is namespace what it contains and important part is how a namespace is created in real time and then we'll see how do we make use of access modifiers how do we make use of what? Access modifier. Three things. Okay. Fine. First point. Namespace you can refer according to OS as folder. OS. In operating system it is folder. Nothing but a project. And the same namespace in programming it is a collection of elements it's a collection of elements classes interfaces enum structures delegates and all that stuff those things will be available under what namespace this is not the way you provide namespace in real time always it will be like this you say namespace created in this way first we say domain type com dot company name infosys dot namespace class library one it means this is a library or dll designed by infosys employee if you have one more namespace to be created again i can say namespace you can say like this uh, unv dot unv dot uh, uh, usmania dot class library one now with this you come to a conclusion that this dll has been designed by Students of Ismania University, DLL. So, like this, we are going to name our what namespaces. This is the technique we follow, like namespaces in this way.
okay hmm. for practice purpose we are giving just a name but real time this is the technique we follow so anyway class library okay now what i will do here already you find that by default there is a class added by name what now class one by default it's added by name class one inside this class one inside inside this class one what i will do i'll put one method public void show console dot right line from show of class one in class library one yes. this is the message this is a message save this now what i'll do i'll add one more class also but this time i don't write public i simply create a class called class 2 and here also i'll write public void display console dot write line from display of class 2 in class library 1 interesting thing of this coding is is class 1 automatically it is created i only added a method and it was created with public access modifier class 2 we created and i wantedly skipped access modifier for i didn't write public when you don't write any access modifier then by default it is internal not private by default it is internal not private It is internal. Now we need to see what is the difference between public and internal. So that you can see in this way. But already two things I added. Now we have to see a difference of what is public class and what is internal class. What is public class and what is internal class. Okay, now to see the difference, we have to make these all changes first. First, first rule, you cannot run DLL, add executable project, right click on the solution, then add, then new project, continue with whatever the name we have, console app one, done, add same unnecessary code and all you remove these all are unnecessary at this stage you need to make this class method as public even not needed even if you make also no problem okay make and then rule is in this console application one project you have to give a reference of class library one before giving a reference rule is it should be compiled yes compile then after compilation after after compilation now what you have to do go to solution explorer right click on the project that is executable project then say add then reference then browse browse and after that go to c drive then cs back pm demo on namespaces in that class library one pin debug dll and okay done add it class library and rule the third rule make console application one as startup project set as startup project 
already program.cs is added. Now, there are two classes in it. First, write namespace class library one dot. It will show only class one. It is not showing. It is not showing class two. It is not showing class two. It's showing only what class one. Okay. So now important thing is now important thing is when you say class library one dot class one, it means only public classes are going to work outside the assembly. Only public classes are going to work outside the assembly, not internal classes. It means difference between public and internal is public works within and outside class library that is DLL, whereas public I'm saying public works within and outside class library that is DLL, whereas internal works only within class library or within what DLL within assembly internal works within assembly public works within and outside the assembly that makes a difference so class one then you can say c1 equal to new class library one dot class one constructor c1 dot show yes but here display should also be executed right display so to to make display work i have to use class 2 i have to create instance of what class 2 so only then it is going to work so where do you create in class 1 you create now class 2 c2 new class 2 constructor c2 dot display that over run the code first main will work main will call c1 and c1 will call c2 why it is in oh, acha we have to compile we after making changes i didn't compile now compile this code hmm. successful Yes. You want to get even information about main also? Right here. Console dot right line in main. After this, I'll write console dot right line end of main. Yes, save. Class one dot cs program dot cs. Now compile execute the code. Yes. That's it. So here what is highlighted is what is the difference we notice 
when we create elements with the public access modifier and with the no access modifier so difference is when it is not provided by any access modifier so default it becomes internal default it becomes internal and when it becomes internal the scope of internal is it is going to work only within the assembly it doesn't work outside the assembly internal so only two access modifiers are allowed if, uh, only two access modifiers are allowed uh, when you